Welcome to the AAA in New South Wales. What's happening in the nuclear arms race? Attempts by the West and others to persuade North Korea to give up its nuclear ambitions have met with little success despite sanctions and despite the prospect of the six power talks perhaps resuming again soon. Iran still has nuclear ambitions also and shows no signs of being willing to give up its nuclear program. But on the brighter side, America and Russia have had talks on reducing their nuclear weaponry. A recent speaker at the Glover Cottages on this subject was Richard Banofsky, and he joins me now. Richard, in view of the talks between President Obama and President Medvedev, is there some cause for optimism? Colin, there has been a lot of hope, uh, especially in 2009 when President Obama in Prague talked about abolishing nuclear weapons. It's a, an expression that isn't often used by the president of the only superpower. And yes, when he uh, negotiated the START arrangement with President Medvedev, uh, it, was, it was a sign that they were quite serious about reducing their arms. The point is that they say a lot about disarmament. They say a lot about reducing nuclear weapons. There's a lot said about uh, this being the most uh, critical and existential threat to the continuation of, of the human race. But in fact, uh, President Obama has authorized the increase in expenditure by 22% of the budget required to make nuclear weapons in the United States and the Russians have responded to that. So we still have, within both uh, those two countries, a very potent and very powerful uh, nuclear force. Just how dangerous is the present situation? I'd suggest there are three dangers. The first danger does relate to the former two superpowers, and that is the use uh, of nuclear weapons in an accident. There have been cases in the past where there have been re near misses where the, the Soviets have mistaken uh, a Norwegian uh, atmospheric rocket for an incoming ICBM from the United States and a colonel almost pressed the button. That was about 20 years ago. And there have been other, uh, other examples of that where, which shows that a launch on warning, a hair trigger alert system for nuclear weapons between those two countries can be, can be used the wrong way or can, can, lead, uh, can lead to disaster through accident. The other two dangers are firstly terrorists getting hold of nuclear weapons. They have no worry about any kind of nuclear deterrence themselves because they're not a nation state. In fact, many of them, as we know, would welcome martyrdom by being, by being killed. Uh, that, that's, the big, that's the big concern. And the third, the third threat is from the proliferation of nuclear weapons among countries of the world. We have nine countries in the world now that have nuclear weapons. The five established recognized nuclear states of France and Britain and Russia and China and the United States. Then India, Pakistan and Israel. I think Iran shortly to get nuclear weapons and North Korea certainly has nuclear weapons technology as well. The more countries that develop nuclear weapons, the more countries that have nuclear technology, the more likely there will be the likelihood of proliferation in the world. Richard Bronowski talking to me there after addressing the Australian Institute for International Affairs in New South Wales.